What's going on, guys? My name is Donnie O'Malley. I was a Marine Infantry Officer. Believe it or not, it was zero. And um, I, was, uh, uh, I was in Afghanistan for just one pump. And I was uh, very frustrated, I was frequently frustrated while I was there. The only way to deal with the frustration, at least the way that I chose to deal with it, was with humor. I just, everything that I saw that was completely asinine, I just had to make a joke about it. And there was a lot of that kind of stuff that existed there from, from <laughs> my bosses sometimes, some of the battalion staff, to the Afghan army, those guys were a real hoot, to the Taliban. Like, it, it, so much of it was absurd and hilarious, and all of us actually made a complete joke of it. The rules of engagement were a complete joke, and, um, you know, led to our dudes getting hurt, and that created frustration, and that frustration created comedy. I started writing my stories, you know, at my experiences, I started writing it on my laptop, and in between patrols and missions and, and stuff like that, and, uh, I would send them home, and the response that I would get from my buddies was awesome. My buddies who were still in the Marine Corps, I, I would also email it to my buddies who the other lieutenants I was serving with, um, who were in my tent, and they got to read them. And just that, that, the laughter that I got from them reading my stories made me feel good, made me want to keep doing it. So I kept writing my stories. Um, fast forward a couple of years later, I, I did almost six years in the Marine Corps, and as I was, I was in a wounded war battalion at the end, never hit by enemy fire, just very weak and very brittle. Um, and on the way out, I started a blog, started writing the stories, started building an audience of infantrymen who wanted to read my stuff. And I was very focused. I, it was, it, it was, uh, it was it, frustration. It, so much of this goes back to frustration. I was really frustrated that all of the war books I had ever read, and even the war movies, they were never made for me, and they weren't made for the guys who, who were doing most of the ground pounding, which were the enlisted dudes who were beneath me. No one ever wrote a book for them. It seemed like most of these war books were written for civilians about the war experience, but nothing was written for them to kind of help them process their experiences, help them, uh, you know, deal with, with what they had experienced. And I thought that was a darn shame. So I decided to put my experiences together and write a book for the dudes who were doing the fighting. I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna be the typical dude who writes a book about these guys that none of them really care to read. That, there's another tragedy to me, and that's also frustrating. So, I wrote the book for... Everybody good over there? <laughs> um, back on track. So, I uh, wrote the book for the, for the, the young gunfighters, and, and as I'm writing, I'm like thinking about the dudes I served with, and I'm just trying to make them laugh. That's all I want. If I could just get them to laugh, the book was a success. And so I took that same mindset when I started making videos. I was like, I'm only making videos for infantrymen who have been to combat. I don't care if anybody else watches this stuff. And so as a result, there was a small niche of infantrymen who wanted to watch my videos and they were really, really grateful. And they were like, yo, dude, we'd pay for this. Thanks for doing this, we'll pay for it. So I'm like, okay, how can I make a living doing this? Because making, making these guys laugh makes me feel good. And I'm, I'm, I'm selfish asshole. It's, it's, it's all about me, really. I wanted to feel good. Making them laugh made me feel good. So I'm like, that's what I'm gonna do. So the idea for Vet TV came up after you know research and discussions and whatnot. Uh, I got a bunch of um, awesome dudes to help me start it. Mostly Marine grunts. We had some Army guys there. Um, dudes, a couple of machine gunners I served with, Luke and Jason. Um, guy that I, uh, I just met, like going. <laughs> my last day in, in 2-5. Um, that was my only time I met him. And he ended up, he's now runs the business and he, he helped me start it. And, um, it has been, uh, you know, everything that we've done leading up to a grunt's life was meant to entertain infantrymen. And we keep it real. We keep it 
We, we write dialogue that grunts actually say. We say the same atrocious jokes that we would make in combat, like about killing each other, like killing our own, killing our bosses, killing civilians, um, animals, like, like the, the most horrible things that you could do. And the, that, that, that's what we have to make a joke about. Like if it's horrible, if it's terrible, if it's wrong, if it's inappropriate, if it's tragic, then we are going to use comedy to, to process that and to deal with it. And so that's how a grunt's life was made. Grunt's life was made making um, a comedy out of a tragedy. And it was written out of frustration with that entire experience, with, with the civilian population that we're trying to help, who's actually going and helping the Taliban behind their backs, with the Taliban. Actually, the ta I was least frustrated with the Taliban than anyone else, because they'd pop up and we'd try to kill them in maybe a quarter of the time we would. And it was, that was fun. What wasn't fun was the Afghan army that were just lazy pieces of garbage. They're like, they're not even defending their own country. It turns out we're the idiots for thinking that they actually gave a shit about their own country. That's, that's on us. <laughs> but um, but that, that frustration, civilians um, with the IEDs that were just hard to find, you just pop them every now and then, that sucks. That gets frustrating. And uh, Helicopters go down all the time and uh, the, the, the leadership is just making decisions that make no sense. I, I, I watched leadership make decisions and do things that got my squad leaders kicked out of Islick Infantry Squad Leaders course, right? The same things that got them kicked out of Islick. My bosses are doing, and they're not getting fired. So that's frustrating. Really frustrating. And <clears throat> that a young corporal or sergeant would be fired for doing something in training, but, a, but an officer. Big. Badass Marine officer with the, with the highest expectations of himself and, 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 and of the Marines beneath him that he can do all these things and not like have nothing happens. So that was frustrating. So we wrote a grunt's life and guess what a grunt's life is filled with? It's filled with fantasies of murdering uh, Lieutenant Murphy's boss. And uh, Murphy's my character, in case you didn't know that already. Um, and a lot of these frustrations and fantasies are built on what I actually felt when I was in Afghanistan. And uh, as it turns out, the show was a big hit because it recreated so many of these fantasies and these emotions and these thoughts accurately. And the jokes too, the comedy, right? I was surrounded by a group of sergeants that were the funniest comedians that I will ever work with. And these, they were just infantry sergeants in the Marine Corps. That's where my comedy comes from. I'm, I'm, I'm beholden to them for, for everything that I experienced because I just took the comedy that I saw in the infantry that they had with themselves and, and I, I hung out with them every now and then when they would let me. They let that, the, the O in. And, um, and that's what a grunt's life is. It is infantry humor at its finest. The closest thing I can think of is, is, is Generation Killed and after that's Full Metal Jacket. But even then, we nail it better than both of them. And, um, and I know that's a big thing to say, but that's the truth. And when you see it, you'll think the same. Everything from the actual situations that we wrote, from the sound design of guys yelling funny stuff in the background, to the music, music making a complete mockery of these really serious situations in war. Um, all of it is comedy meant for the infantrymen. Whether a Marine or Army, it doesn't matter. Grunts are the same. Um, of course, I like to think Marine grunts are better, but um, it's not, I can't make the statement. I can just make the recommendation. So anyways, if you are, if you're, if you're uh, intrigued by or you appreciate grunt humor, if you like dark humor, violent humor, irreverent humor, irreverent means an inability to take serious things seriously. If any of that intrigues you, interests you, then you need to buy the movie. And uh, you will be very, very grateful once you do so. And if not, then just return it. Actually, I don't know if Amazon and iTunes lets you do that. No? Okay, well, you're stuck with it. You're, it's worth it. Okay, if you heard all this and you still buy it, that means you're kind of an idiot if you don't like it. So, there you go. Watch A Grunt's Life, the movie. Buy it on Amazon and iTunes. And um, please leave us a review and a testimony in telling us what you think of it. And be as honest as possible. If you, if you think it's miserable and atrocious, please write that. Because we're going to then reuse that as marketing. So, I'm going to say thank you in advance to all of you. We're going to bash it. Um, it's all going to be helpful to us. So, thanks a lot. Go watch A Grunt's Life. And uh, if you're still in the service, especially in the infantry, then keep training. 
as like push yourself to the brink of death because uh, that's what you're going to do in combat and if you're out of the military then leave that mindset behind and move on and, uh, and take care of yourself peace and war